You know how some movies are so bad they're good? And here they come! Well, MMA fights are like that too. What the hell is going on in the octagon? This is a list of fights that fans thought were boring, sloppy, or just outright sucked. These are some of the worst fights in MMA. At Pride 4 in 1998, UFC veteran Mark Kerr took on Hugo Duarte in a fight that could only be described as pathetic and terrible and atrocious, horrendous, tedious, lame, and on top of that, it sucked too. He seems to be having a lot of emotional problems in this fight. Kerr's opponent, Hugo Duarte, seemed intimidated throughout the fight, looking for any opportunity to pause the action. What did he do? Uh, I, I, I'd like to see a replay. No, there is nothing. What is this, man? Duarte continued to complain. But Hugo trying to explode a little bit there. Making this the kind of fight where you feel bad for the referee. Duarte seems to be barking something to the referee. Uh, it sounds a little bit like Flipper, the seal. Duarte had an interesting strategy to deal with the ground and pound of Kerr, which simply involved jumping out of the ring. And Hugo was trying to jump out of the ring, and he has his eyes closed. I, I, I really don't think Hugo what wa is this? wants to continue it. At one point, the referee had to drag Duarte by the arms, like a child throwing a tantrum at a grocery store. Well, Duarte he seems to be having a lot of emotional problems in this fight. What, he can't stand up? Uh... Duarte, tired and outmatched, was looking for any way out of the fight he could find. Eventually, he decided to just play dead and hope Kerr goes away, which amazingly worked. Fight's over. He doesn't want to fight. He just doesn't want to fight. Melvin Manhoof is one of the scariest and most exciting fighters in MMA. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Not good. Ian Freeman just got bombed. At Bellator 155, he fought Rafael Carvalho for the middleweight championship. The fight was scheduled for five rounds, but nobody expected it to go past the first. Unfortunately, it did. Vatnanov might take his time, but he didn't take this kind of time. Both fighters took an extremely cautious approach throughout the fight, with neither fighter really pushing the pace. I didn't think it was genetically possible for Melvin Vatnanov to be this patient. The most exciting parts of the fight were a four-part series of fouls committed by Carvalho, including a groin shot, a late punch, an eye poke, and another groin shot just for the heck of it. Stop! Another low knee. Another one! By the end of the fight, neither fighter put on an impressive performance, but many believed Manhoof would win the decision. The only thing more disappointing than that fight was that horrendous decision. The crowd seemed shocked by the decision, but no one looked more surprised than Carvalho's own team. Fabio Maldonado versus Fedor Emelianenko isn't one of the worst fights ever because it was boring, or bad really, but because of everything else. I don't know what is going on. The event took place in Moscow, Russia, Emelianenko's home country. This fight was supposed to propel Fedor into the UFC after an impressive performance, but his performance was anything but impressive. I can't believe my eyes. What? What is going on? Fedor was nearly knocked out in the first round, but thanks to some biased refereeing, Fedor was given every chance to recover. Fedor is up! Stop the fight! Interesting side note. The referee was assigned by the Russian MMA union, which Fedor is the president of. No! Viktor Karnev didn't stop the fight! Oh my gosh! Both fighters required smelling salts to even continue after the first round. After that, not a lot happened for the next 10 minutes. What the hell is going on in the octagon? By the end of the fight, almost everyone unanimously agreed the fight was a draw, but Fedor was awarded the win, raising suspicions of favoritism and casting a shadowy cloud over an otherwise ethically responsible nation. Interesting side note, the judges were assigned by the Russian MMA union, which Fedor is the president of. Maldonado, sensing a conflict of interest, filed an appeal to have the fight result overturned. The appeal was initially rejected, but after a month of scrutiny and a second appeal, the fight was rejudged and, to everyone's surprise, was overturned to a draw. That was just nearly unexpected. There isn't a whole lot to say about Anderson Silva versus Talis Ladies. Seriously, there isn't. Round two. 
The majority of the fight revolved around Talus attempting to take Silva down over and over and over again. This yeah. just a really weak takedown attempt. While Silva's striking throughout the fight was creative, ultimately it wasn't very effective and did little damage to his opponent. Not sure what it was, but it connected. The crowd grew bored halfway through the first round, so imagine how angry they were in the fifth. Now they're cheering bullshit. Right. Silva's fights can be hit or miss. Sometimes you get an explosive knockout, and sometimes you don't get much of anything. So now this is where people have criticized Anderson. Correct. He's doing this now. He's just kind of moving around and doing nothing. And a few honorable mentions. Mirko Krokop and Frank Mir seem to do more talking than fighting during their fight at UFC 119. It's almost like an agreement to keep the aggression to a minimum. This wasn't the highest level of MMA, but the fans seemed to enjoy it. This is worse than the MP to cut <laughs> Spider-Man used his superior striking skills to defeat an obviously overmatched Batman and Robin. And nice mobility from Spider-Man. I mean, I noticed he was at a disadvantage initially because he didn't have his web shooters. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe.